Uh, I always liked heroines who had brains. I certainly, I like heroines who question. I like heroines who um, uncover secrets, who question what they are told, and who do not rely on other people's versions of events. So this book, I think the first uh, drafts were maybe too serious, and in reading them, I could kind of feel that a, an imaginary reader would balk at the tragic overload. So then, you know, honestly, it's just a bit like mixing a drink. You know, you, then you suddenly put the humor in to sustain the serious parts. And my model is that you're, I'm trying to imagine you as a reader, uh, and it's sort of like if you had a meter in your head, I always say, and, and this is positive and this is negative. And I just want to know where you are at any given moment. If I feel that you're getting bored, I really want to do something to get that needle up into the positive. So really, I mean, all of the, for me, the complexities, complexities of writing, uh, the thematics and the moral meaning, I don't think about that. But I really think about trying to keep the reader uh, engaged. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's very much about making an intimate relationship between this other person and yourself and every instant of this person. I heard about the material all those years ago, and I just thought, you don't have the resources to write that. Because I, I was very, I could write very naturally in a sarcastic, uh, funny, but I could feel that the story was going to take a bigger, bigger heart, basically. So really what happened was I just got older, you know, and uh, been married happily for 30 years. We have two wonderful kids, and uh, it started to seem strange to me that the only thing I could write was the dark side of things when my experience was much different. So it started it start to feel a little bit um, fraudulent that I couldn't write in that valence. So about four years ago, I thought, I'm just going to try it because it would be a terrible feeling to have said, there's this big, beautiful project that I want to try, but I can't. But if you're right. If you work through something like this, really changes the person. And I, I think the main thing it's done for me is just enliven the question of, you know, is life good or bad? You know, are we lucky to be here or unfortunate? Uh, do we have power to do good or not? And strangely, what it did was it just made me say all over again, I'm not sure. Or, or the answer to all those questions is yes. So now, what I feel like I want to do is go into contemporary materials, you know, instead of 19th century, and start asking those questions again. And for me, the fundamental question of this book and maybe future ones is just, you know, we know a few things. By this time in life, we know a few things for sure. One is that uh, we love people, places, memories, aspirations. We have that positive feeling. We can't deny it. We can't live without it. But also, we know from observation that death is real. Not ours, but everyone else's. Uh, but we have that thing. So, so those things are actually, uh, to me, so much at the heart of any moral event is how do you live joyfully, happily, productively, when you know, first of all, that you're not forever. And then second of all, that that fact might render all of your efforts meaningless. Literature is wonderful because it lets us make a little scale model and try it both ways. Uh, turn up the darkness, turn up the light, and see which combination makes the most sense for us. Uh, and while you're writing the story, and you're imagining, as, as we all do, when we start, the reader is below you. And then you're just doing a dance, basically. You're, you're pulling up a big dump truck full of the manure of your ideas and dropping it on the task of the reader. Uh, that's a very beginner level way of understanding the reader. And the reader doesn't like it because she feels condescended to it. It's kind of like if you went on a date with index cards, you know, and it says 7 o'clock, ask about her mother. You know, it, it, it might lessen your anxiety, but it makes the person feel absent. So I think that the beauty of being an artist is that every day you get to practice imagining the other at a higher level. So if you if you imagine your reader as being just as smart and good-hearted and worldly and well-intentioned as you are, actually your prose 
get smarter. You know, you, your pros get more courteous. Uh, and the interesting side benefit is the, the character that you're creating also comes up. You know, if you start off with a very simple, dismissive uh, thing, I, the example I always use is you, you fire off, Frank was an asshole. Okay. Then the revising part of you comes back and says, excuse me, um, how so? You know, and you say, okay, okay. Uh, Frank snapped at the barista fluidly. And the art says, why do you think he did that? Ah, and so you would write and say, Frank snapped at the barista who reminded him of his wife who had passed away. And not a day since that he felt like himself. Well, suddenly, in just a few revising passes, you took Frank from an asshole to a really three-dimensional and half-dimensional. Yeah, it's all.